Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper which is titled as LinkBert, Pre-Training Language Models with Document Links. This is from researchers from Stanford University. So let's start with the abstract. They say, language models pre-training can learn various knowledge from text corpora, helping downstream tasks. However, existing methods such as BERT model a single document and do not capture dependencies or knowledge that spans across documents. So yeah, this is very much true because if you see the way how BERT works or essentially how it was pre-trained, it was pre-trained on two objectives, which is MLM mass language modeling and NSP, which is next sentence or sequence prediction. And all of this was done at a single document level, which, which means model just knows the context of whatever is there in a single document and nothing around where it links to or any hyperlinks which a particular document follows. So this is where this new concept of link bird comes into the play, which itself is pretty clear from its title saying like, which leverages links which are present between the documents. Or essentially, in other words, saying like, we treat a corpora of documents as graphs and then try to model interdependencies of the knowledge sharing that happens through hyperlinks. So yeah, that's the entire idea. And here again, they pre-trained the language model with two objectives, which is mass language modeling, the same one that we had for the original BERT. And the second is document relation prediction. This is again, more or less a classification objective that original BERT had, but with a different intent. So I'll talk about this more as we go forward in this. But overall, what they achieve is a 5% absolute improvement on a few short question answering because now you can do question answering by hopping in from document to document and seeking answers from there rather than just be dependent on a single document which might really not contain the answer but a hint around what the answer could be. So for example, if you see this figure one, this is the actual document around Tidal Basin, Washington, DC, where it talks about the Tidal Basin, which is a man-made reservoir, and then it also talks about its location where it says it's a focal point of National Cherry Blossom Festival held at each spring. Now, if I want to ask any question around this festival, and this was the document that was given to me, it's pretty much not possible for me to give out the answer until unless the pre-training corpus on which the bird was trained already has some context around what it is. And it fetches that answer out of the blue from its through some magical weights. But yeah, again, we cannot be dependent on that, right? So this is where this link bird comes into play. And this document gets linked to this because you have a hyperlink that connects to this actual document. Think of this as a page cites another page or a paper cites another paper or a Wikipedia page that references to another Wikipedia page. Now here you have all the information about what this is about. When you talk about what kind of trees you have, how many varieties do you have and all sort of things. So yeah, this is a extrapolation of knowledge that happens at the model level, where it is exposed to all the dependencies and the context around the things that are not there in a single document, but present in the interlinked document. So yeah, this is what we're trying to model via link, but I hope now it's pretty much clear to what this model is going to do. So let's move forward and see how they go about modeling all of this. So now if we talk about the overview of this approach, we can see we have a corpus of linked documents because the pre-training involves learning knowledge from related documents. So there has to be a graph that links each of these documents, either inherently coming out from people who write these documents and create these hyperlinks, or maybe if the documents are standalone, we join them using some lexical similarity or probably semantic. So this is the graph that we have. We have like six documents with directed edges, which is like document one refers or hyperlinks document three, document two hyperlinks document one, document four and document six. So that's the logic. So once we have this graph, we create input for our language model. Now those are created in three formats. We have contiguous, random and linked. Contiguous is like same documents, but different segments or sentences. So here a segment is what they treated as either a paragraph or a sentence, anything could be a segment. So two consecutive ones, which is the pth one and the one that's next to it. So if we concatenate both of them with a separator token and give that as an input to the language model. Then we have random where the documents are totally different. So will the context of the segments be? So that is another way of creating the input. 
so contiguous and random is essentially what we already had with nsp right which is next sequence prediction which was the original objective was of the bird model because then this would resolve to a binary classification problem which nsp essentially did but now we have the third way of creating the input which is linked because we are treating everything as a graph so document one relates to document three and then we pick segments from there so this way the exchange of knowledge or the extrapolation of knowledge can be done so now coming to the pre-training objective we again have two of them which is similar to what we had in the original bird first is mass language modeling where we concatenate two segments with a separator token preceded by cls ending with separator and we try to predict mass tokens based on other tokens that occur to its context using self-attention which essentially is fill in the blanks is what we're trying to learn the second one is what they rename it as document relation prediction because because now we want to know whether these two segments of text are coming from linked documents or are these random or are these from the same document but in a contiguous sequence so now the loss function would have two components which is one coming from drp another coming from mlm so this is how it looks like for drp given the hidden representation of the cls token we want to predict which class do we lie in out of all those three classes and we want to maximize this probability and for mlm we get the hidden representation of the ith mass token and we want to know what is the actual word over there where xi essentially iterates over all the words in the vocabulary so yeah this is how the entire objective works which we are trying to optimize now for getting this graph of which we create these language modeling inputs there are two ways either you can crawl documents from the web that already contain these hyperlinks and this can be done on scale because these things are readily available you just need to go and do a multi-hop search and get those documents and then essentially create an edge between the ith and the jth page so that's one way but what if you're now trying to build it for your company where those things are not linked and these are just standalone documentation pages that you have you'll have to go about doing a lexical similarity and create this graph artificially using based on the logic of how words overlap or what's the similarity between these two documents so in this case they crawled the web and had this data at scale but for comparison they also experimented by building document graph using lexical similarity between these two documents where they have used tfidf cosine similarity metric to get top five documents and that's the link that they create between these two documents so yeah that's about the comparative study that they do in the graph aspect now talking about the notion or the strategy to how do you obtain these linked documents or what should be your thought process when you're trying to get these documents linked the first is relevance where the idea is the document that you're trying to link to the original document or the anchor document has to be relevant to it at the first place now you already get it if you crawl the web using hyperlinks but if you want you can also build it using lexical similarity they found both the methods to work better than just using some random links the second is salience which essentially uh, which essentially calculates like the new document that you're trying to link to the anchor document what new knowledge it's bringing on the table so in this case they found like hyperlinks are potentially more advantageous because this is what people write documents and link these documents to external documents with the lexical similarity you can get these redundancies and not always necessarily you will be adding documents that add new knowledge so here hyperlinks perform really well the third one is diversity so in web you will often find some master nodes right if you talk about let's say a page in the united states then you'll have many pages that link to this master page so which means this could be the supporting document for many anchor segments or anchor documents that you have but this is not what you want right so they sample the link document based on how less or how much in degree does the supporting document has so if it has less number of n degree the probability of choosing it becomes higher for getting it linked to the anchor document so this is the logic that they use to add diversity rather than adding the same documents again and again as a supporting document so yeah that's about the paper now they have experiments and results 
So at really high level, if you see for all these data sets, if you take the average performance, BERT tiny, BERT base, and BERT large, if you compare it against the similar versions of link BERT, we have clearly four, two, and three points the performance than the original BERT model. So yeah, that's pretty good actually. And also if you see an example of multi-hop question answering, if this was the question that we had and this was the document A that was given to the BERT model, then BERT would have predicted Toronto for, for this question that says Rodden brothers were taken over in 1953 by a group headquartered in which Canadian city? So, but Toronto is an answer for where this was founded rather than the company that took it over in 1953. But in the same document you have in sentence that says it was taken over by this in 1953, but we want what is the location for this. So we go to the document B, which is a hyperlink to this. And here we get Montreal as an answer. So LinkBird gets you this answer, which is Montreal, whereas Bird just predicts Toronto based on the context that it has and the lack of relation that LinkBird uses to expand its knowledge. So yeah, this is the power that we're talking about. Cool. So if you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I am Prakar Mishra signing off. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.